Hey guys, Tyler here with Torwigs Guiding Service. Want to take a sec and talk about wintertime baits. Right now, it's kind of towards the end of December. Uh, water temps are fairly low right now, kind of low 60s, and they probably will continue to get a little cooler, especially in January as we have some more cold fronts. So during this time of year, the fishing can be a little difficult, but you can still have some really good days out here in the wintertime. So I want to take a sec, I'm going to go through my top five baits that I always have tied on this time of year and things that I recommend you try next time you're out here. So we'll discuss, you know, baits, how I like to fish them, what conditions I look for, and everything that goes into selecting which one to throw depending on the application and how you're fishing. So like I said, we're going to go over my top five baits. Now, when I'm fishing in the winter time, and this is more for when the water is in the low 60s or below, there's kind of two ways to go about trying to target these fish, and that's either to fish very fast or to fish very slow, not so much in the middle. And what you're doing is trying to trigger a reaction bite, so in that case something you know flashy, something quick moving that these fish are going to you know, react to just out of instinct and not so much because they're hungry is going to be really effective. On the opposite end of the spectrum, something slow moving, like a jig or a ned rig, and we're going to get into that, something to where it's a very easy meal. One of these, you know, slow moving fish can come up and gulp it down with very little effort without expending a ton of energy or burning a bunch of calories to catch that prey. That's going to be something that they favor. So you'll notice in these five baits, either they're going to be fast moving or they're going to be slow moving. This is a bait that I throw year round out here, but I personally think it really excels in cold water. And if you fish tournaments, you'll notice you'll see a lot of guys slinging these, especially in the colder months. And that's going to be an Alabama rig. An Alabama rig excels especially in cold water because it's very flashy. Obviously, it's got these little blades on it. And just a little side note, I do prefer to throw the one that has blades on it. They do make Alabama rigs, obviously, that don't. Typically, I'm going to throw small willow leaves in either silver or gold. Um, kind of depending on the water clarity. If it's a little bit more stained, I prefer gold. If it's very clear, I'll throw silver. Um, and then you've got five little swim baits on here. Here in Texas, legally, you're allowed up to five hooks, so that's what I go with. Um, and you're trying to match the hatch. Out here on Lake Travis, one of the main forage is threadfin shad, which you probably are aware, but they're just small little silver-looking minnows. So I try to mimic that. So there's two swim baits that I like to throw. One is going to be a Kitek Easy Shiner. So just a small little Kitek bait like this. It mimics those very well. Or another good alternative, if you can't find those, is a Zoom Swimming Flute. Both of these are just small little three to four inch swim baits that mimic those threadfin shad. And this bait I find works really, really good just because of how much commotion and how much flash and how much you know vibration it gives off. A bait like this is gonna be a good search bait. So I'm gonna cast this out there and I'm gonna cover a lot of water with this. Ledges, main lake points, and especially any area that there's a little bit of wind blowing into is gonna be when I love throwing these. Today, it's very calm out here, almost no wind. This probably would not be my go-to bait. However, if I was out here when it's real windy and honestly nastier the weather, the better, this is gonna be one of the first things I pick up and I just start covering water and I'm gonna try and figure out where these fish are positioned as I start to develop a pattern. So definitely have this one tied on during the winter time. Bait number two. For the second bait, you're gonna go with a crankbait. I love throwing crankbaits out here. And again, this is gonna be similar to the A-Rig and this is a search bait. And this is gonna be something to try and trigger a reaction bite. This is a fast moving bait that you're gonna cover a lot of water with. Try and grind this thing down in the rocks and try and trigger those fish into striking it just out of pure instinct. So when it comes to crankbait, there's a variety that you can throw. Here I've got a 1.5 KVD flat side. This is a Strike King bait. Whatever your personal preference is, it really doesn't matter brand. But what you do want to note is the depth that the bill will get you down to. So out here, I throw medium diving crankbait quite a bit. So that's going to be a bait that gets anywhere from you know 8 to 12, maybe even 15 feet. Now, depending on where you're fishing, you want to match that crankbait to the depth you're fishing. So if you're, you know, let's say up to Pernales or further up river and you're fishing a little bit more shallow, a square bill would be a very good option. Down here on the lower end where it's very steep and, you know, a lot of deeper of water generally, I'm going to be throwing either a medium diver and sometimes even deeper than that. I'll be throwing a 6XD, even an 8XD. So just remember, you know, focus on the depth that you're fishing and pick a crankbait that's going to pair up with that depth so that you're trying to get this hit in the rocks and deflecting off stuff to trigger that reaction bite. Um, Spro rock crawlers, uh, storm wiggle warts, the 1.5 flat side are all very good options for those medium diving crankbaits. 
As far as color go, there's just kind of two that I stick with. Um, two of the main forage in this lake is either threadfin shad or crawfish, especially since this lake is 99% rock. So I'm generally going to be throwing either an orange or red color, which I have here, or I'm going to throw a color to mimic those threadfin shad. So something, you know, white and black, Tennessee shad, sexy shad, if the water's a little bit more stained, are all going to be good color options. Bait number three is going to be the football jig. If you follow me on social media, you'll probably see that I post a lot of pictures with fish that have this bait in their mouth. This is a bait that I throw pretty much year round, but especially in the colder months. Earlier in the video, we talked about how you can either feed these fish something very fast moving to trigger a reaction strike, or the opposite end of the spectrum where you're going very slow with it, trying to trick them into biting and presenting them with a very easy to catch meal. That's what this is gonna be. Football jigs are also great at targeting larger fish. You know, it's a little bit bigger profile than say a smaller Texas rig or Ned rig, something else that you would fish on the bottom. As far as, you know, the actual jig itself, um, I love throwing these things so much that I make my own. I pour and tie them all, so I get very picky about it. And I fish a lot of these and kind of refine the way I like to fish it. So what I recommend is a half ounce jig. I throw that probably 75% of the time. But a good rule of thumb is to try and match the weight of the jig to the depth that you're fishing. If you're fishing very shallow, you may go with a 3 8 If you're fishing very deep, maybe a 3 quarter ounce. But you don't want to go so heavy that you start getting stuck too much, it falls too quickly. You do still want you know, a somewhat slow falling action, but not so much that you're having trouble maintaining bottom contact. You want to be able to feel these rocks and make certain that you're on the bottom, because if you're not maintaining that contact with the bottom, you're not going to get bit. So out here on Travis, half ounce is what I throw 75% of the time. As far as colors go, I'm throwing mostly browns, browns, green pumpkins, um, and then the accent color for that will change slightly depending on the time of year. But in the fall and winter time, it's mostly going to be orange or red. So you can see this one here is one that I've tied up. It's kind of a dark brown with a little bit of orange in it. And then as far as trailers go, there's two trailers that I like to throw in the colder months. One's going to be a Zoom Speed Craw. I love Zoom Speed Craws. I throw these a ton. Whenever I go to Academy and buy these, I usually buy 20 packs at a time. They love them out here. They work very well. Speed Craw is going to be a very good bait when you're making long casts trying to cover water. Um, they do have a little bit more action than a chunk trailer, which is what I'm going to get to. But this is a very good option as a trailer. Green Pumpkin is probably one of my favorite colors to match with this color uh, skirt. Um, you can also add you know, different accents to it, a little bit of orange, red, chartreuse dye, depending on things like the water clarity. The other trailer that I'll use, and this is going to be more when the water is in the 50s, anything above that, I'm probably going to throw that speed craw, maybe even a rage craw, but that's going to be a chunk trailer. Okay, Chunk trailers have been around a long time. Uh, a lot of people know about the old pork trailers. Uh, you know, the Uncle Josh pork trailers worked really good, so if you can get your hands on those, those are excellent, but they're very hard to find because they discontinued them. But a chunk trailer is a much slower type of trailer in terms of how it moves on the bottom. It doesn't have nearly as much action, it doesn't kick as much. So they excel in cold water when these fish are more lethargic because, you know, think about it, the crawfish are also a little bit more lethargic being cold blooded. So they're slower moving on the bottom and you're mimicking that. So consider using a chunk trailer the next time you're throwing a football jig if the water's in the 50s, a little bit colder. So make sure you keep one of these tied on anytime you're out here on Travis, but especially in the winter time. Bait number four is gonna be the Ned Rig. I love throwing Ned Rigs out here. This is another bait that I pour my own jig heads. I like to use the owner hooks and I'm very picky about it because while this is a small bait, you can catch some really good sized fish on it. A Ned Rig, you know, when you think about this bait, it doesn't look like much. Honestly, I have a love-hate relationship with these baits. I have enough tackle in my garage and boat to open my own tackle shop, yet half the time these fish love eating this stupid little piece of plastic. There's not much to it. It's a little stick of plastic, okay? But they love it. When fishing this bait, it's very similar to how you fish the football jig in that it's very slow and methodical. You maintain that bottom contact and you keep it down there in the rocks where these fish are gonna be. So I like to throw a quarter ounce. Out here on Travis, being that it's very deep, I go a little bit heavier to help me feel the bottom better. You can go away, uh, you can go a little bit lighter and you'll get hung up a little bit less. But honestly, I don't notice that big of a difference. So 99 times out of 100, I'm gonna throw a quarter ounce. As far as colors go, Anything natural, but you're mimicking a crawfish. Now, a little side note on this is something to keep in mind is that a largemouth bass's brain is nowhere near as complex as ours. 
So when they see this moving on the bottom, while it is just a little chunk of plastic, they're not necessarily associating it directly with what a crawfish looks like. Rather, it's simply a slow moving object on the bottom that is very easy for them to catch. And they associate the last time they caught something like a crawfish, you know, it's slow moving, they came up, ate it real easily. That's what this is mimicking. So the fact that it's just a stick of plastic, don't let that throw you off or discourage you from th throwing this bait. Um, as far as colors, green pumpkin and green pumpkin orange are the two that I'm gonna be throwing the majority of the time out here in the fall and in the winter time. Like we talked about with the crawfish, they tend to have an orange or kind of reddish color um, to their shell. So that's why I'm throwing this color. This works really good when the bite's a little bit tougher. So on days where it's very calm, very little wind, this is gonna be a bait that's gonna put fish in your boat. So make sure you've got this one tied on in the winter time as well. Last but not least, bait number five. That's gonna be a drop shot. If you've ever fished with me or you know me, you know I love to drop shot. I throw this year round. I think it's one of the most versatile baits out there. You can cast it out, you can fish it in marinas, you can vertical fish it. There's so much you can do with this. So in the winter time, I especially love this bait because it's very easy to maintain that bottom contact and really feel the rock and fish slow. So as far as rigging up a drop shot, there's a couple recommendations I have. And I do this so much that I've really refined this to what I find works very, very well here on Travis, and I don't deviate from this. First thing is line choice, very important. Braided line is key. Braided line has almost no stretch to it, and it's extremely sensitive. I recommend 10 pound white Power Pro, and I like to go with the white color line because it's easier to see, and I like to watch the line quite a bit when I fish to look for those subtle bites or to watch to see if the bait is still falling or sinking to the bottom. So 10 pound white Power Pro. From there, you wanna go with the leader. Good rule of thumb is go with as light of a leader as you can get away with. Here on Lake Travis, unfortunately, we've got a bad problem with zebra mussels, which obviously, you know, their shells are very sharp and it forces me to use a little heavier line. So I recommend either 10 or 12 pound test, depending on how bad the zebra mussels are in the area you're fishing. I like to connect the two lines with an Alberto knot, that way it passes through the micro guides on this Dobbins rod really easily. And from there, just a small drop shot hook, either a one knot or a size one. Uh, Gamakatsu makes a very good drop shot hook. Owner Mosquito hook is a very good option but either a one knot or a size one is gonna be perfect for this setup. From there, the possibilities are endless, but as far as the worm goes, I love zoom trick worms and I love robo worms. Most of the time, you're gonna catch me throwing a straight tail worm. Um, the finesse size trick worm is also a very good bait throughout here in the winter if the bite's a little bit tougher. I'll downsize from that full size trick worm and it tends to get a few more bites. You will catch a few smaller fish, but you'll still catch big ones as well. You just gotta weed through them. As far as colors go, um, that kind of depends on conditions, but there's a few that I would recommend definitely picking up next time you're at the tackle shop. And that's going to be either green pumpkin, green pumpkin red, watermelon, uh, red bug, or margarita mutilator, which is a color that the robo worm makes. All of those are excellent colors out here on Travis. I tend to stick with very natural looking colors with the exception of that purple. Um, so give those a try, and that's kind of one of those things that I'll start fishing, and I change bait colors quite a bit, and as you notice the fish bite one better than the other, you start, you know, kind of customizing things and figuring out what the fish want. Last but not least is your sinker. I pour these myself, and I find the cylinder weights work the best. Quarter ounce or three eighths is what I throw most of the time, and that's just depending on how deep you're fishing. So definitely tie on one of these drop shots when you're fishing in the wintertime, because it's a very effective way to fish around docks, around ledges, really anywhere, and especially bluff walls, which is a pattern I fish a lot in the winter time. So keep one of these tied up this season. I hope these five baits help you guys the next time you're out here on Lake Travis fishing. These are baits that I put in a lot of time to figure out work well out here, and especially in the winter time. So if you're out here in December, January, even into the beginning of February, pay attention to that water temp, and if the water is in the 60s or lower, these are gonna put fish in the boat for you. If you guys are interested in booking a trip with me, especially one of my coaching trips where we go more in depth and we talk about these baits as well as others, we'll go into you know why to throw these, what conditions to look for in order to select which bait to throw. Book a trip with me through my website. It's fish512.com. You can either book online or give me a call directly. Hope to see you guys out there on the water and I hope this video helps you catch more fish. Thanks.